Reviewing a YouTube channel and the claims made in two videos that amount to around seven minutes or something like that. Chris Sanders Energy or Sanders Energy or Sanders 133 or uh, etc. Various YouTube channels, mainly just one we're talking about. Joined 2013 April 12th, 48,000 views, 3.4 thousand subs, 435 vids, and that's about it. That's a pretty good efficiency level on a YouTube channel, even during our trying times where YouTube and Google are just basically screwing with people for fun. His most popular vids were about oil and gas drilling, just on the face of it, and current politics. His oldest videos were about music and pot, and gas drilling and oil drilling. And his newest videos are about politics and better, on na better natural gas methods in general, mostly. <clears throat> All of his websites he links to are ones he has complete control over or main control over. All content is not public domain, protected by copyrights ranging all the way back to 1979, and unauthorized distribution is a violation of applicable laws. Sounds litigious as hell, but these are for the web pages. And this is old school cut and paste boilerplate to tell people, no, I will actually defend something I create. Let's talk about some of his uh, websites first. Um, the BarnettShale.com. This site's describing the geology of the Barnett Shale deposit. Oil shales. It's, it, it's, it's literally it. It doesn't seem to have any woo or BS in it, and it's a long pager. I've told people about this before, but if you take the content that would fit on a single sheet of paper and spread it out over several pages you have to click to... People are going to notice that you're trying to pad the page. Then there are one-pagers where everybody puts on one page. It's like a single-page resume kind of thing. It seems minimal, but it doesn't waste your time. This is a long-pager where it really should be broken up into several pages, mostly because it seems more professional, but it is a way of making a page where you put up all of your content, just like a book, but you don't have any pages or chapters. It's a scroll. And it's a lot more like a modern blog, and it's more tolerated now, but in the past this was seen as being... Very unprofessional, but I recommend you read the damn thing. Archive below. I'm not kidding. The the, Bennett, the, the Barnett Shale .com, I'm recommending you look at it. Now, that comes off of his main page or hub page, depending on how you look at it. SandersOilAndGas.com, which is spelled out that way. Hub page leads to his other sites and does absolutely nothing else currently, and I'm not going to look up the archive.org version of it, to see if it had any other content before that's not relevant currently. Most of his assertions that I'm going to be critiquing, and it'll surprise you both ways, are exclusively things that are just recent, so let's just treat them as the here and now. But I am kind of curious about the 1979 copyright dates. I, I have no clue what this guy has done in his existence. Next, a web page called gascompanypayment.com. It's a broken bill matrix payment website, which should be immediately removed. He also sometimes says the name of the pages wrong, to where if you type it in as he says, you'll end up on a web page that installs malware. One of the things you're told is that if you want to be taken seriously, or worse, if you don't want to be taken seriously in a court case, always make sure you explicitly describe how to type out a web address so that you cannot be interpreted as sending a person to a malware website. Explicit, not implicit when it comes to web addresses. Do not spell check my IP address. That's not how it works. That's a joke in the internet community. Next, countylandman.com. This is where we get into his services that he and others are involved in. He has one or two sites where he and a bunch of people do basically the same thing, wildcatters in the oil industry or all sorts of things, get together and decide they're going to put up several pages, probably other pages he may not be on, um, where they're offering their services. Deed opinions for $1,000. Title opinions for $10,000. Chain of title work, $10,000. $25,000 for warranty deeds and or mineral deeds. The word warranty means something different. Please look up words before you comment. Mineral services per month are $100,000. Now this implies strongly that when he, when he gets work, he gets a shit ton of money. Or a bunch of them get a shit ton of money. And this is very lucrative. And these are special purpose activities. 
you don't go to New York and find someone in the you know on, on Craigslist who says, yeah, this is how you build a nuclear power plant, and I'm authorized to do it. This isn't as extreme as that, but it's getting close to it. We're talking a person who could, if he got work on a regular basis, and that's the key point, he probably isn't, uh, he'd be making a million dollars over a 10-year period of time and be able to stuff it in the bank and be happy, as long as he didn't have really rich tastes in uh, you know, having real property and being able to manage it. I'm complaining about how expensive it is these days to even have a hunk of dirt. Um, you know, expensive taste, wanting to be happy. Um, as long as he didn't push it too far, he'd probably retire early. But anyway, SandersDrilling.com. $10,000 a day and up, sometimes less. For services doing basically the same kind of thing for drilling and stuff. Um, then we have the Lone Star Natural Electric Company. Drilling services is $10,000 a day is also listed and up, or one k a day, various things. And another website that come up with the following claims. The other website is explicitly about the claims that are being critiqued. But we'll list the ones on the Lone Star Natural Electric. He touts natural gas to electric to water, air to water, proprietary technology to save the children. I, I threw that in there, but that's really on his page. Save for the children. Um, and it's described better later, but let's list the one from Air to Water Info. That's a website, dot .info. And by the way, yeah, that was the one that brought up four different variations on how you might type that out, at minimum, that would result in malware installs. In fact, Google wouldn't let me find it because of the other malware sites. Um, using natural gas generators, that doesn't mean it makes gen it generates natural gas, right? Hold on to your hat. To turn carbon dioxide into oxygen and natural gas and or produce clean drinking water and or burn the natural gas more efficiently and or making clean drinking water and reducing CO2 and doubling the efficiency of uh, everything, including diesel. Current claim synopsis. This is inaccurate because he's done several statements that contradict each other. 50% efficiency increase, 80% efficiency increase, 100% efficiency increase. Talking about the same subject. And in one case, in the same video. That may just be me misinterpreting it, but it's not as clear as it could be. Currently claims he has an invention and or a generator that's a proprietary technology. Translation, here we go with a critique. He's not telling people exactly what it is. It shifts a little bit. Maybe he's just missaying things, like the domain names, or maybe he's saying them on purpose, not correct, so that you can't double-check what he's talking about. I don't know. But he definitively won't tell you how any of this works as clearly as he could since he's been at this for, you know, since 2013 or something. Or even earlier. Increasing the efficiency, the energy efficiency of fossil fuels, like natural gas, crude oil, whatever, by 50 to 100%. Now, that doesn't, that's not actually impossible. That's actually correct. Energy efficiency from burning fuels, including natural gas, is so horribly bad that you can double the percentage to where it's still crap or maybe not crap, but you're, you're starting from a really low end. So doubling the efficiency of something isn't as extreme as it might sound. And it's very needed, by the way. But anyway, by adding, quote, hydrogen to it, and he hints at, but doesn't explicitly explain this, that it's extracted from water. Yeah, that's electrolysis of water to produce hydrogen and oxygen. And then dumping the hydrogen into another hydrocarbon that's already got plenty of hydrogen to make it to where it burns more efficiently. 80% less emissions. And also can make more water by dehumidifying the air, which is the most inefficient way to get water. If you're in an area that you can't just get water from a well or from the ground or from literally baking dirt to get the water out, you know, distilling it. Um, this amounts to undistilling. Basically, you condense the water out of the air using a dehumidifier to get water. Moisture Farmer, Star Wars. That's literally the thing, same thing. 
And it's so energy inefficient that you burn off huge amounts of fuel to do that. Versus literally digging a ditch from another water source and just making a canal system and aquifer systems can be tapped and and you run aqueducts and uh, literally what we do. Well, this doesn't require infrastructure. Yeah, it does. It requires you have a fuel source, energy source, which some people have and don't have the other infrastructure. Okay, seems very tempting. But it's so inefficient that you end up polluting the air horribly, no matter how efficient this is, and you don't get enough water to sustain anybody, enough people, for them to do enough work to sustain the equipment because there is a baseline mechanical cost. It's not what it's based on dollars and cents. It's based on can you maintain this equipment. And he described this coming from a well he described as stranded. These are wells that are in, out in the middle of nowhere, he describes, that are too far away from infrastructure to make it efficient, quote-unquote, to extract fuel. Hence the $10,000 a day job where he goes to your property, finds old wells that are petered out, tries to improve them, which is not a bad thing. I'm not going to fault him for that, especially in Texas where you might just drill a second well and get more out. I mean, and then exploiting that for producing energy or making water from the air, or condensing, using the energy up by burning it, to then recycle the fuel in the air, because it's carbon dioxide, to make more fuel to store later, to act as a storage media for when it isn't readily available. That's actually a... a, a, We'll go on with this. Also, he said that this all will work on a car intake, and then he segues into cryptocurrency mining as an investment if you don't have anything to do with the electricity. Instead of indicating wire cabling putting you on grid means you can sell it back to the grid at the big power company's expense. And they'll thank you for it because you're basically providing power for the next guy next door. Next door. Because that's how the grid works. Dehumidifiers in the desert don't work. He's not saying that that's what it's for, but he's implying that because the only place I know of a person would need to go to the extreme lengths of literally doing a Mad Max style or Star Wars style moisture farming equipment is if you have some massive source of power like the sun and you need to condense water out of the air. But if you're in an area where that's the only source of water you're going to get that would really work, you're either in an area that would benefit better by just drilling for water or whatever, or some other methods. Also, if you're in an area with contaminated groundwater, it is absolutely more efficient to drain all of the water from underground and remove all the water that's toxic and then distill it, getting the muck out of it, and literally spraying it back on the ground at night to keep washing the ground to where you get rid of the contaminants so you can actually use well water. I'm not kidding. People are doing that in some areas. Literally fixing a Superfund site almost, not quite, but almost that well, by making it to where you literally pump out all the crap as deep as you can, clean it up, and then the muck goes over here in a pile that you keep dry so it doesn't go back in the groundwater. But no, dehumidifying the air is not useful in areas where people need it because they're in an area where you can't do it. In places where you can do it easily, they already have water supply. This is uh, the water seer bullshit thing that was debunked by Thunderfoot. Car intake HHO. Yeah, it's HHO meme again. And then unburning the pollution back into fuel. That's not an unfair assessment. You will hate this guy, but here is his spiel. He's trying to sell his services doing things that would actually make him a bunch of money and honestly make people better off if they were willing to build community power grids, which is what he's advocating. The rest of the stuff is either him misinterpreting information or maybe being slightly dishonest. He might just show up and tell you, look, it's all a spiel. This is what we're going to do. This is what's practical. Do what's practical first that benefits you massively, and then we'll do the other. If you have extra power, you can keep drilling until you get water. And or just clean the water. Do I think I hate this guy? No, but I think he's bordering on becoming a sh- a snake oil salesman. Um, but I am recommending the uh, the page about the, uh, the Barnett Shell... Uh, deposit. It's educational and it's it, it's a lot of work you put into it. He just needs to make it neater again. If you're watching, don't alter it any more than just making it into pages. Make it a book. Maybe sell the book. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And this is apparently a review of a wildcatter who's gone completely wild.